What evidence, Father? In Miss Winter's room. Miss Winter's? She is the one we suspect. You're wrong. Can you prove it? Well, if I have any judgment at all, I can vouch for her, yes. <laughs> I do not desire to imply that your judgment is bad, son. You have no desire, nor any reason. If you don't go to Aunt Abigail and have this stopped, then I shall. You shall? There is only one thing that you are going to do. You're going to stay out of it. If we're wrong about Miss Winters, then the Reverend Task will find her innocent. Reverend Task? Yes, from Salem. He has been remarkably successful in finding out witches. It is much easier to find a witch than to prove someone is not one. That is quite true, I'm afraid. The world being what it is. Father, if you don't stop this man from coming here... I cannot. Then I must protect Miss Winters. You will do nothing of the sort, my son. I am determined to find out what has caused the strange happenings in this house. If this is the only way, so be it. And if you warn Miss Winters, I will regard you as part of the enemy. Is that clear? Sir, have gone to the new house. And my brother? Out walking with the foreign gentleman. Find him for me immediately, please. Oh, Riggs. Where is Mr. Barnabas? At the shipyard, I believe, sir. Thank you. Hurry if you will. I couldn't. No one is here. I've sent for Joshua. No one? I said no one. Jeremiah, are you frightened too? No. I don't know what we shall say. That we are married? That what we have done cannot be undone. That is all we can say. Should we do it this way? You were the one who wanted to come back here. But I don't know. Jeremiah, help me. You wanted to come back and face them. That's what we're going to do. You seem so cold. Am I? Yes. Yes, perhaps you're right. I'm tired. The, the trip. No. No, that's not true. It's being back here in this house, this room. You feel differently toward me. I wish you'd stayed in the carriage. I see no reason for you to be involved with what's going to happen. But I am involved. Yes. We both are. And we hate it. It wasn't worth it, was it? You feel no love for me? Nor I for you. Josette. It's true. Admit it. It's hard to feel anything but a certain uneasiness over what's coming. We're, we're both nervous and upset. We must be kind to each other. Yes, we must learn to be kind. Papa! Oh. Oh. 
It's all right. Now, don't cry. Please don't cry. It's going to be all right. You know, whatever happened, we'll set it straight. Joshua. The prodigal has returned. Well, my brother, what have you to say for yourself? Well, did whatever spirits that whisked you away from here deprive you of your voice? We're waiting to hear your story. No spirits took us, Joshua. We are married. How sad. It's true, Papa. You told me that you had promised me that you would stay away from my daughter. I tried to obey your order. You knew of this, sir. Yes, I knew that they had met once, alone. Get him, I... We have no explanation for what we have done. At least none that will satisfy either of you. Obviously, we are unwelcome here. Understandably. We will be at the inn in the village. You will not, sir. Let me finish, Joshua. Until we decide what we are to do. You have no choice as what you are going to do. You are married in the eyes of our Lord. You will live here. Jeremiah, we can. I will not tolerate the gossip which you're staying in the village would start. There will be enough questions asked behind our backs as it is. We are a family. We will be a united front. This is the way it must be. I will have your luggage brought in. Josette. You are married, Barnabas. Married? Married. No. You tell me you're married. Tell me, I must hear from you. No, Barnabas. Tell me, Josette. I am married. Why? Why did you do it? Barnabas, please. She cannot. I didn't know you. I was wrong about you. If it pleases you to think so, please. You... You give me this opportunity now. And you... Barnabas. How could you? I have no explanation. You don't know why you stole her. I... I thought I loved her. But you do not love her now. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, no. No. What we felt for each other, we could not fight. Then you will fight me. No. Have your choice of weapon. You will not fight. Josette. It is between men now. I forbid a duel. Oh, no, Barnabas, please don't. Once I would have listened to you. But that has changed. You've even lost your right to ask me now. No. We've done enough. We've caused enough trouble. Please don't. You, sir. Please stop them and then. For your brother's sake. No. For your son's sake. There will be no duel. I said that once, and I meant it. There have been enough tragedies in this house. There will not be another. You cannot stop a duel by words, father. We will fight. No, Josette. You must stay out of this. But how can I stay out of something that I started? We ran away without considering the cost. We both knew without thinking that eventually we would have to pay. The payment is simply due sooner than we, than we expected. You want him to kill you. Perhaps that is the cost. You want to die? It is not what I want. It is what Barnabas wants. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, Papa. Barnabas wishes to see you, Jeremiah. You have interfered, sir. I am a father. 
I have not lost interest in her happiness because she's your wife. I will not see him. You must. What can we say to each other? Can I turn back our friendship? No, but you can settle this so you both can live without each other's friendship. Jeremiah, you must go to him. You owe him an explanation. There is none to give. Well, perhaps you go to him and tell him. Perhaps no. he'll understand. It is useless. Jeremiah, if you must be punished, so must I. Let our punishment be our life. Not your death. In. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you asked me to come. No. That isn't true, is it? You're not glad I came, and I'm not glad I'm here. Well, after all these years, we have nothing to talk about, do we? Nothing we can talk about safely, no. Why did you let him talk you into seeing me? What did you want me to say? That I'm sorry? How sad if you are. I am sorry. I am. Then I have reason to hate you. Because if you do not love her, you ruined all our lives for nothing. Don't you think I would have avoided it if I could? It should have been easy. You knew she was mine. She came to me. I don't believe you. No, of course you don't. I should have gone away. I tried when I realized what was happening. Why didn't you come to me then? Because... Because it was so illogical. So mad. It was as if we were under a spell. You know yourself better than that. No, it's true. It's true, there was no sense to it. No sense in it. Father told you to say that. No one told me to say anything. You'll be talking about witchcraft next. Anything to stop yourself from admitting the truth. What is the truth, Barnabas? You tell me then. That you wanted her the first time you saw her. That you went behind my back. That you didn't care what happened to me. I did. That somehow you made her love you that you took every advantage of her. I couldn't help myself. Knowing what would happen. Knowing the trouble you would cause. Yes. Yes. You must have hated me all your life. Oh, no. No, I... I don't know how I feel about anyone anymore. I only know that Josette and I had to be together. So you would do it again. If it happened as it did, I would have no choice. Then I have none either. Water brought you back to consciousness. Here, yeah, you must rest. No. I must go to them. No, you can't. He will kill him. He will kill him. Ten paces, then turn, 
count to three. Then fire. Is that understood? Yes. Are you ready? You must believe that in all these years, I never lied to you until this. And that lie made me a stranger, even to myself. Then I will fight a stranger and not the man you were. Now let us get it over with. I am ready. Turn. One. Two. Three. Barnabas! Jeremiah, stop! Ah! No! Oh! Angelique, run quickly, get help! Oh, Jeremiah. My darling. Jeremiah, please. You monster! You madman! We're so full of pride you couldn't stand to see us happy. What have you done? What? Killed him. You've killed the only man I ever loved. Don't you come any closer. I will take care of him. He is my husband and my life. Why couldn't you accept that? Why couldn't you let him be my life? I must help him. No! He will Don't die. You touch him. He will die without help. And you will have killed him. How is Jeremiah? Uh, the doctor allowed me only a few minutes in the room. Yes, yes, but how is he? Still unconscious. The doctor says he's hovering between life and death. Someone in this house wanted that duel to take place. Someone wants Jeremiah to die. You're a very superstitious woman, aren't you, Countess? I tell you, it is true. And I say with all due respect, it's nonsense. Considering the way Barnabas was treated, that duel was unavoidable. One of us had better answer it, Lieutenant. I have learned not to wait for the servants in this house to perform their simple duties. I am here to see Miss Abigail Collins. She is expecting me. Why don't you come in, please? You must be the Reverend Trask. I am? I am the Countess Dupre, and this is Lieutenant Forbes. Lieutenant? You have not come a moment too soon. I find that is usually the case. If you'll follow me, I'll show you the way to Jeremiah Collins' room. Jeremiah? The Reverend wishes to see Miss Abigail Collins. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed that Abigail had sent for him because of Jeremiah's condition. No, yeah, Lieutenant. Reverend Trask has come to find and destroy the witch in this house. Countess, may I ask by whose authority this gentleman has come here? By the authority vested in me by the Almighty. The Almighty. Well, forgive me, Mr. Trask, but what, what church do you represent? I have my own congregation in Salem. He didn't answer the question. He is not here to answer questions, but to ask them. In other words, the Reverend is a self-appointed cleric and has not been ordained by any church at all. I have been asked to come here by Miss Abigail Collins to exorcise a witch. And that is what I intend to do. Thank you. 
Kindly tell Miss Collins that I'm here. Get you out of this house at once. What are you talking about? I told about? you the other day you might be needing a friend. Well, you do now, and I'm volunteering to help you. And I told you the other day that your manners could see some improving. Miss Winters, you are in danger. I didn't realize how seriously Abigail and the Countess were taking this witchcraft business. Oh, it's that again. Yes, and don't try to dismiss it too lightly. Well, you don't think I should take it seriously, do you? You'd better. Abigail has sent for a witch hunter. He's in this house downstairs right now, and he'll be wanting to see you in a few minutes. Well, what do you suggest that I do? Well, look, we can go out the back way and saddle up two horses. I can take you into Collinsport. You can stay at the inn for a few <laughs> days. You have to forgive me if I'm amused by your persistence. As a matter of fact, I admire it. Now, listen to me. This is not what you think it is. Now, I'm really trying to help you. And I don't need your help, thank you. Abigail and the Countess are convinced that you're a witch and they brought this man here to prove it. Now, you've got to get out of here. Well, why should I run away? I'm not a witch, and therefore I have nothing to fear. Except perhaps you. All right. Stay and find out for yourself. I've seen these fanatics before. I know how they work. I wouldn't look forward to it if I were you. Well, I think I can take care of myself. More than adequate. Perhaps. But I wouldn't count on it. You both believe that witchcraft has been practiced in this house. We are convinced of it. You have evidence to support your suspicions? I knew the moment I saw her, when I looked into her eyes, I knew that girl was possessed by the devil. I personally would accept your judgment, Abigail, but we shall need something more substantial than one person's word, however trustworthy that word may be. We must have tangible evidence of an act of sorcery. We have all the evidence you need. The signs are unmistakable. Tell me about them. We have witnessed strange afflictions which doctors of medicine could not explain and mysterious disappearances. Disappearances? My brother Joshua was standing right there over a week ago. Jeremiah was in the room with him when suddenly Joshua disappeared in thin air and in his place was a large black cat should use black magic and changed him into a cat. Then days later, I saw the cat upstairs in her room. Suddenly, the cat gave a terrible scream and was surrounded by smoke. And when the smoke cleared, there was Joshua come back to us. And the cat was nowhere to be seen. No one can tell me that my brother was not the victim of a witch's evil ways. I agree with you, Abigail. And I share your conviction that we must act quickly. I should like to question this young woman you suspect. What is her name? Her name is Victoria Winters. <laughs> Victoria Winters. She is not a member of the family. She was employed about two weeks ago as Sarah's governess. I warned my brother Joshua not to let her in the house, but he refused to listen to me. What is all this? Oh, What's Reverend Fask, this is my nephew, Barnabas Collins. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Aunt Abigail, did I hear you say that you think that Miss Winters is a witch? You did? That's absurd. The girl is no more a witch than I am. That's for Reverend Trask to determine. There is nothing to determine here one way or another. Miss Winters is a very fine young lady. She is efficient and dedicated. And she has endeared herself to most, almost everyone here in the family. The devil does not always appear to us in the face of evil, Mr. Collins. He sometimes appears in the guise of innocence and purity. 
May I ask what evidence you have that Miss Winters has actually committed wrongdoing? I am told that certain strange things have happened in this house of late. That's true. But none of them have been caused by witchcraft. Barnabas, how can you say that? You yourself were a victim of black magic. He very nearly died, Reverend. Oh? Can you describe this act of black magic, Mr. Collins? My affliction was not caused by black magic. Yes, it was. One moment you were as normal as ever, and then you began to choke. Someone had cast a spell on you. What nonsense. Nonsense, is it? Perhaps you have a more logical explanation for this incident? It could have happened for any number of reasons. But even the doctor of medicine was completely mystified after he examined you. And how did you recover from this affliction? I don't know. It went away as suddenly as it came. I find that most interesting. Barnabas, how do you account for all the things that have been happening to Josette? How do you account for the strange way she behaved when the brand appeared on her hand? Brand? What kind of a brand was it, Countess? It was in the form of a pitchfork. A well-known signature of the devil. Who is Josette? Josette Dupre is my niece. She was engaged to Barnabas. Was engaged? Two days ago, she ran off with Jeremiah Collins and married him. And I can account for her behavior very simply, Countess. Her action was not the result of witchcraft. It was the result of a deficiency in her own character. <laughs> 